Welcome to Module 5 Concepts, Identifying the Light Key for Night and Evening. What we'll cover today is night is an example of low light conditions, the relationship of low light to diffused light, the general light key, light envelope for low light or night, and the specific light key or envelope for our demo photos for this module. So let's dive in. Night is an example of low light conditions. So what is happening in a nighttime scene, as in this photograph of the moon over the ocean, is that we have extremely limited light. When you have very limited light, several things happen. It changes the relationship of the four elements of color. It alters our perception of the lighting situation tremendously. But low light means there is less available light to create contrast in either hue, value, intensity, or temperature. It also means that you will have softer edges and less defined shapes. It's much easier to see this in a photograph of night or low light than at times it is when we are standing in low light or night. The camera responds in a much more sensitive way to the lack of light and becomes very, very diffused. So that leads us to the relationship of low light to diffused light. And it's easiest to think of low light as being extremely diffused light. It is an example of extreme diffusion. And you can see that here in comparing photographs of the nocturne, the moon over the ocean, and the rainstorm moving in over the marsh. So we have much the same um, situation as diffused light, but carried to an extreme. That's why module five night follows on the diffuse light atmospheric conditions module, because it takes that idea and concept to an extreme situation. When you look at the difference between these two photographs, the one on the left has very, very limited range of hues, very, very limited contrast in value, very, very limited contrast in temperature, and slightly lower in intensities as well. So it takes everything we talked about in diffusion to an extreme. Now, not every low light night scene has as low an intensity in color as this one, but many do. So we're going to talk about the general light key, light envelope for low light and night. So let's look at this painting of a nighttime scene along a rural highway. And think about our four aspects of color. And let's look at how that nighttime scene, the nighttime situation, is affecting those four aspects of color. So we have hue, value, intensity, and temperature. When you look at a low light night scene, you're going to have a more limited range of hues. And those hues may range from being very monochromatic, meaning all within the same hue family, to being analogous, which means that they are hues that are sitting next to each other on the color wheel. So a complementary color scheme would not be appropriate for a nighttime scene or a low light scene. You're not going to have that much contrast in hue. With value, you tend to have a slightly lower contrast in value. So instead of going from a contrast of black to white, which you would have in a full um, lit situation. You'll have a contrast of maybe nine as the darkest dark to value two or three. Again, very similar to diffused light in that situation. With intensity, this is where you have 
some some contrast. Ten, intensity can range from duller to super intense with low light situations. So you can have very intense colors in lower light situations, but you just won't have as much contrast in some of the other areas. With temperature, you can have some contrast, just like value, you can have a certain amount of contrast, but it's not going to be as great as it was with strong lighting situations. So you'll have a contrast within related hues rather than within hues that are totally opposite to each other. So it will be colors that are next to each other and subtle contrast of temperature rather than extreme contrast of temperature. The specific light key envelope for our demo photos. So we have two uh, situations or subjects that we're working with. One night scene where the illumination or the light comes from the moon and one where it comes from a street light. So we have a rural situation and an urban situation. And there's a lot of similarity between the two, although there are some differences. Now I want you to remember as we look at the photographs here that photographs lie and that the photograph will uh, expose for either the strongest light or the in the, the light itself or for the landscape. So in photographs of nighttime scenes, that light source can look much brighter than it actually was when it was perceived by the eye. So we need to take that into account. So here is our rural scene with illumination from the moon. You can see the moon in the upper right hand corner peeking through the trees. And you'll notice that the contrast in value here is very low. The moon appears to be almost white. Remember that's the camera line just a little bit. Uh, but the moon is giving us our illumination and the landscape has very little contrast in value. In value, we're still working almost all below middle gray although we're gonna exaggerate that contrast just a hair in the painting so that it will be perceived from a distance. Here you see it in black and white and it's a little bit easier to see those contrasts in value. When we go back to the color version, look at next the contrast in hue. Everything is very, very closely related. There is a strong element of violet, blue violet that runs through all of the colors, even almost with the exception, but even with the moon. The moon is a slightly cooled yellow. Remember I said that the photograph lies just a little bit, so we're going to compensate for that in our color mixing. Then the intensities can be very, very strong there are some very rich colors here. Now the camera in a low light situation will begin to do what we call reticulate. It will begin to speckle because of there being low light. So you'll see some speckling in here that undermines the intensity of the color, but the sky was a very intense blue. So this is the final painting. And you'll see that there's a strong contrast in intensity, but a lowered contrast in value, lower contrast in hue, and lower contrast in temperature. And we're going to have the same thing in our urban landscape. So the light of the street light appears incredibly bright in the photograph. It truly is a little bit less bright than that. And you can see that in the black and white version that the camera is exposing for the light, which means that everything else will um, appear a little bit off in relationship to that. So we have to compensate just a hair so it will appear as our eyes see it rather than as the photograph sees it. But the contrast in value is a little bit lower. The contrast in hue is lower. You'll notice how many uh, very cool temperatures there are here, but also look at how the artificial lights 
warm up the illuminated areas just a little bit. Then, and that is not at all unusual with artificial light because the artificial lights have warm colors to them. So it's going to give us slight differences from the moonlight as the source, which has a very blue light by comparison. So in our final painting, you can see those warm lit um, lighting uh, effects that the illumination from the street light begins to cast warmer light than would be from the moon. So again, low contrast in value, lower contrast in temperature, lower contrast in hues, but wider contrast, or it still can have a wide contrast in intensity. Because of it being artificial illumination in the low light situation, you can have some more contrast in temperature here. So what we've covered today is night is an example of low light conditions, the relationship of low light to diffuse light, the general light key for the situation, and the specific light key envelope for our demo photos. So let's dive in and do the work. Remember to practice seeing the light key. That's as important as painting it. Practice recognizing the color qualities of night light in lots of different low light situations and use a color spot tool when in doubt to help analyze the colors that you see in your subjects. Let's dive in to our paint mixing.